Here I have a center console. At the front end, I have a pocket that needs to be put in. This pocket's going to eventually contain cup holders. So as you can see, I have everything slabbed out. Now I need to create the frame that's going to slab out the actual pocket. So for that, I'm going to start off in freestyle. I'm going to true my view up, and I'm going to go ahead and dump in a 3D curve. Now this curve doesn't have to be terribly accurate right now. It's just a curve at the moment. It's going to go on the XY plane. Now that I have my 3D curve, I'm going to go ahead and go to control points. When I go into control points, it's going to tell me you're creating a NURBS element, basically. I can't modify the original with this tool, and that's fine. Once I have that in there as such, what I want to do is I want to create a symmetry across the ZX plane. What this does is it's going to make sure that everything that I do is going to be symmetrical about that ZX plane. Now the original curve, I can keep it, hide it, do whatever I want to. If I need to reuse it, I can just delete. In this case, I'm just going to delete it. So I'm going to go back in and let me go ahead and hide these surfaces. So for this, you can see I want to take this curve and I want to get it closer to this mass of points. So I'll come back in here. Once again, I want to do my symmetry. Pull this up a bit. And let's see, we'll pull this up a bit. Get it kind of close. Actually, you know what? Maybe give it a little bit more curvature that way. There we go. And it doesn't matter what end I pull, it's going to symmetry the opposite end. So this is fine. Now it's close enough for what I want to do. Now that I have my curve in place, I'm going to go ahead back into generative shape and I'm going to show my surfaces and I want to use the original sweep that went into making this. So I'm going to project this curve onto the sweep along a direction, which is the Z. Now I can hide this. What this allows me to do is I can now modify this split. Double click on the split, pick my curve, select OK. Next thing I need to do is I need to create my surfaces or my slabs. So you can see I have a side slab here that's going to come down. I have a step. I have a surface that's going to come down and another surface that's going to come down. Now I'm going to go ahead and generate a couple of sweeps for this. So I'll go into my sweep function. Pick my curve, pick my Z direction. This is going to be with a draft direction. I'm going to say 15 degrees. And I'm going to go down 50 mils, and I'll go in the opposite direction 10 mils. It's always good to slap things out, build them big. Now that I have my initial slab in, that looks pretty good for what I want to do. And select OK. I'll do the same thing with this. Z direction, preview, looks pretty good. Select OK and cancel. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this surface and I'm going to offset it out. The reason I want to take that surface and offset it out is because I want to create a nice concentric looking uh, set of surfaces for this little step. And for that, I'll actually let me change the color of this. Let me go in here and go into this, make it a little bit easier to see. And for that, I'll just simply do my offset, surface, reverse, and go out that step distance. Now that I have that in, next thing I need to do is create that curve that's there on that step. So for that, once again, I'm going to go back into this, parent children. I'm going to go into sweep. I'm going to hide show. I'm going to offset this, reverse, simply select OK for now. And with this, you can see, let me center graph, hide show, pretty close to where I want to be. That's not too far off. So I'm just going to do an intersection, intersect this and this, select OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and do a split. Uh, I'm going to split this to this surface, other side, select OK, just to verify that this is what I want. And as you can see, it's pretty close. This surface is pretty close to those points. 
gives me pretty much everything that I need. Now that I have that in place, next thing I need to do is think, start thinking about my blends. So you'll see I have to have a, a nice blend transition across this top surface. I have another blend transition across this surface, and this, this basically gets blended out into nothing on this wall. And the way I want to do that is I'm going to go in and with that, I'm going to take this offset, this first offset that I created here, and I'm going to make a shape fillet. That shape fillet is going to go to this surface, and I want to point in the correct direction. I want to go chordal, conic parameter, we'll say 35, and preview. See how that looks? Looks pretty good. And turn off my trim supports. I don't want to trim anything on this. Now that I have that in there, the next thing I need to do is take this offset and do an intersection with this blend here. That gives me that curve. Now, I'm going to take the initial sweep that I use this offset. Let me show that. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this this sweep is intersecting this top or this blend here as well and it's hitting even though I use those curves it's hitting at this point this is just a verification that everything lines up and matches that's all this is in some cases you need to verify if you don't verify you could end up with something that uh, is slightly off at an endpoint could be a couple of microns off you can measure this to make sure everything matches and fits that's the only purpose for this you may actually need to use this as a spine string depending on how you construct the surface on this corner okay so now uh, let me go ahead and hide this I'm gonna do my splits once again and let me hide my point cloud I'm gonna split this offset oh, I apologize my splits are already there I just have to hide that and then I have to split this here to this curve now that I have those in place I'm gonna go ahead and build this right through here as a blend surf so there's my step surface now I need to take this step I need to transition this all the way around to this curve. Now for that, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go to my fillet. I'm going to go ahead and extract the boundary on this edge. I'm just going to say tangent continuity there. I'll do the same thing over here because I may need that curve. I prefer not to use edges if I if I don't have to. Now that I have that curve in place what this allows me to do is I can do an intersection let me go ahead and hide this get that out of the way I want to intersect this and this to create that point now based off of that I'm gonna go back and bring up my initial sweep there we go and what I want to do next is I want to take this point and I want to get this point projected up to here. Now I don't want to use the, 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 the B rep, so I'm going to do another intersection. I'm going to intersect this and this. That's why I extracted it. And do just a simple projection. I want to project this up to here and just say normal. Okay. And let me go ahead and hide this for now. want to see something it gave me a little error message there let's go project intersect project normal nearest none good there we go it's just trying to smooth out a point 
So that's why it gave me that little error message. Can't smooth out a point. Now, I'm going to go back in and bring back that. I know I've done it a few times, but this is just the nature of the game. And what I want to do here is I want to draw in this curve that I need that wraps around over to this edge. So I'll just go with the spline, pick this point, make it a tangent, cross that point to this point, picking this, making it tangent, reversing it, geometry on support on this. And then now this is where you may want to start playing around with that spline to get the look that you need. So maybe it's a couple of curvatures, changing the tension a little bit. This is where you got to play around with it. But now we know that curve sits on that surface. If it's not looking beautiful right at the moment, I can come back and modify that later on, which I will do. Actually, hold on. Let me make sure I put it on the surface. Yep, I put it on the surface. Okay, so now... The next thing I need to do is I'm going to draw a line. I want to take this line from here to here, put it on that surface, and to close this off, I'm simply going to go in there and use a multi-section surf. I want to go from here to here. Notice there's no tangencies to impose there. So for my guides, I want to go from this. This is where I'm going to impose my tangency. And I want to go to this one, and this is what I'm going to impose my tangency to, and select OK. And there is my transition surface in that corner. So let me go ahead and hide this initial surface. Now you'll notice that I have this split to this curve. Well, I want to clean that split up. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and symmetry this and this. Cross my ZX plane. I'm going to go ahead and split this curve to this point and to this point. And I'm going to join these three curves. So now I'll just go into this. And for that, project, project 2, I'm going to replace it with this. Other side, select OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and symmetry this. I could have picked all these to symmetry at once. And now I'm going to split this to here and to here. Select OK. And then once again, symmetry this. Now that that's symmetried, I'm going to take my split and I'm going to say split to there and split to there. And then split this to here and to here. And to finish this off, I'm just going to symmetry these three elements. Now the beauty of building this way is, is that I have a nice parametric model. So if I needed to make a quick modification, I can come in here. And as you can see, that modification happened really quickly. Just simply change the offset. This step now got a little bit bigger. Same thing for this offset. Maybe I needed to go a little bit further out. I make my modification. There goes my offset. If I change my fillet, maybe I wanted to add a little bit more peak to it. Now I have a little bit more peak to that fillet. Again, because I use parametric tools, everything updates cleanly and accordingly. So if I go back in, and this is the spline initially that I made this corner with, this is where I would, once I get everything done, once I have it all nice and completed, I true up my view. I hide show things, I turn on some lights, turn off some lights, and this is where I start cleaning these kinds of transitions up. So maybe this is where you go in there and you go, okay, I want to bring this out a little bit more. And things start looking a little bit better. Okay, maybe maybe the tension on this blend or this this the t -t 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 this face or a face blend or shape fillet, apologize, is a little too steep. Maybe I gotta go back to 0.5. So you can start playing around with 
the the final product and that's the idea behind these parameters is getting things really close initially they don't have to be too close but getting them relatively close and then going back and tweaking everything and modifying it so what ends up happening is you end up with a result that's truly desirable without having to do too much work up front because you may end up okay maybe I need to change this shape and then change this shape again to get what you really want and maybe not up front you won't know what it is you want until you have everything carved out put into place